So many fat chicks. I'm sick of movements. There's so many movements. The body positivity movement, the fat acceptance movement, movements, move. I'm sick of movements that I've created my own. It's called the average man movement. We welcome ugly blokes. We welcome unfit blokes. We welcome the worst blokes. We welcome blokes so grotesque they look like you. I honestly hate the idea that being obese and giving up on trying to be the best version of yourself is glorified, and it really is. Look anywhere on social media and everyone's hashtag positive about their big fat guts, and that is garbage, ladies and gentlemen. That is not a good way to live your life. That's a good way to get in the ground earlier than you should. That's so hot, my God. <laughs> so yeah, averageman.com. You can get free programs, you can get great merch, all that type of stuff. That's where you need to go to get an average bod. You may have even seen the episodes we've made. Yes! Yes! Now, yes! Jeez, you smell like alcohol, Josh. <laughs> Two. Three. Four. Hold up. <laughs> slowly push up, slowly push up. Push up more, push up. That's it. Again, kick again. But there's one thing we haven't covered in these videos, and that is cardio and diet. Cardio is important, of course, but it's not the only way you lose fat. Diet is the best way to do that. And I've tried different diets throughout my life, a lot of them I'm sure you have as well. For me, the best diet, and I'm not a doctor, I don't know what I'm talking about, to lose weight and to maintain a healthy weight is the keto diet. That's how I have, in the past, lost up to 40 kilos. And you know what? I thought to myself, what is the best way to talk about a low-carb diet than talk to a doctor who loves the low-carb diet and actually specializes in the low-carb diet? So I talked to my mate, Dr. Paul Mason, about all things health, diet, and everything. I'm not going to drink it again. It's way too hot. <laughs> everything in between. Welcome. How can I help you today? All right. Well, let's talk about let's talk about nutrition to start with. How can I be the healthiest version of myself? Right. So essentially, you're turning thirty. Yeah. And to be fair, that's pretty young to be starting to get worried about these existential type of crises. But your uh, partner's got a bun in the oven, and uh, you're looking. You've led a pretty fit and active life. And you want to keep on leading that life for as long as you can. That's it. That's it. And, um, you know, obviously, as I get older, things like back pain come into play. But also there's a, there's a series of health uh, risks that are associated with my family that are passed down that I, I want to sort of uh, circumvent if I can or at least navigate away from them. Um, other things simply like weight loss, making sure I'm as lean as I, I, I can be realistically without... Um, without sort of putting too much stress on, um, you know, not being able to enjoy the, the little things in life, like uh, smashing a bit or whatever, if, if I want to. Uh, I, f I feel like that that's important for me. Uh, but also making sure, you know, micronutrient levels are as, as you know, as high or as, or as they need to be, as high as they should be. Um, you know, keeping anything uh, that needs to be low, low, or anything that needs to be high, well, to high. this point, have you ever had a thorough analysis of your health? I've never had like a full blood panel. I've never uh, done any of those type of things. Um, you know, I've had my blood pressure taken and that seems to be fine. I've had uh, blood, blood results done here, there and everywhere, but I don't know if we've ever sat down and gone, okay, this is where this is at. And if I have, I think it's been with a GP who basically just goes, okay, done, 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 and then moves on. You know, they've, they've only got 15 minutes with you sort of thing. And are you familiar with the when you go to the GP and they go through your bloods and they're just looking for the results that have been highlighted or got a little asterisk next to them? Yeah. And if that doesn't have an asterisk or it's not highlighted, they just move on. They say, well, that's fine. But do you know what the asterisk actually represents? So is that to suggest that it's outside of a normal range? It's outside of a normal range, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's unhealthy. Sure. Uh, and that's the whole key point because a lot of these values, a lot of the reference intervals are set based on population values. And when you've got a sick population, 
a normal value for a sick population is not necessarily a healthy value. Mm, that's way too big. I've never really thought about it like that. It's an interesting point that Paul made. We are relying on a sick population to give us our baseline. That is an interesting way to think about it and something I'm sure you've never thought about either. The fact of the matter is, <laughs> why do I have all these horns? That we are as a population unhealthy at a cellular level and it all comes down to the way we live our lives, stress, and of course food. The Australian Bureau of Statistics National Health Survey from 2017 to 2018 revealed that 67% of Australians were overweight. That's about 12.5 million people in this country running around with too much chub on their body. That is what is known in this great country as I grab another one of these. <laughs> as a fuck ton. There is so many obese people in this country and yet we are supposed to celebrate it? No, fucking no. So here's a question. What does our sick, overweight population have in common with the American population or the English population? In America right now, roughly two out of three US adults are overweight or obese. That's around 69%. Think about that, 69 with two very heavy people. That is a recipe for disaster. In the UK, it's 63%. Massive numbers, massive people. In all three examples, it's only going up. These numbers are only increasing. Why? Diet. Now, Dr. Paul Mason and I went into depth discussing the low carb diet and the keto diet in our conversation. I won't give you the entire conversation because we did also discuss a lot of my private health matters, but he sent me off for a battery of tests, and I mean a battery. We were searching for a lot of different things from nutrient deficiencies to cholesterol to basically all the inflammation throughout the body. And when I say a battery of tests, I mean like all of the fucking tests, ladies and gentlemen. They drew 12 <laughs> vials of blood from me. Do you know what happens when they draw 12 vials of blood? I fucking fainted. I fainted. I fainted. The poor little woman that was there drawing my blood, she had this giant man, 110 kilos, falling. Right? They had to catch me, they had to protect me, they had to save my life. Now I should have filmed it, but Claire was in bed because she's very pregnant and fair enough to her. But I did send this hilarious photo to her and she freaked the fuck out. It was pretty scary. Uh, and this is me directly after I got home. G'day. So I just had, uh, this is the uh, post, um, what's it called? blood test. Post blood test. So I just had the blood tests, um, a giant blood test. I think there was like 20 different things they were looking at and uh, 12 different vials. It took them ages to sort out how many vials and all this type of stuff. They had to ring up and make sure they had everything. It was a whole thing. And I got up this morning, it was after a ghost hunt. Uh, so we didn't get home until about two o'clock or at least didn't get to sleep about two o'clock. I got up about eight, went and got it done. Apparently I was dehydrated. Uh, I said to Claire, she was in bed. I said, don't come. You don't need to come. She goes, I need, I'll, I'll be there. I'll be there to look after you. I said, I'll be fine. She said, it's a lot of blood tests. I said, I'll be fine. And then what happened, Claire? He fucking fainted. I fucking fainted. Here is the honest truth. Most people eat too many calories, too much fat, too much protein, too many carbs. Just too much of everything. They just need to draw it back a little bit. And that's why I find the keto diet the best diet to do that. You cut out all the carbs and you restrict your calories naturally. You're not as hungry. And that was what I plan to do over the next six weeks. I'm going to see how much weight I can drop and also what body fat percentage I can get down to. And to do that, the best way is to go and get what is known as a DEXA scan. And uh, I did that. And ladies and gentlemen, I was pretty pissed off with what I found out. All right, so I just got photocopied by the DEXA scan. Uh, and let's have a look. I thought I'd be around 17% body fat. I haven't dieted for a quite a while. I haven't been, I've basically been eating whatever I want. 24.4%. Wow. That's more than I thought. Uh, so 110 kilos. She did make me weigh in with my clothes on, so, and I haven't pooped today. 
Uh, so yeah, 24.4%. Interesting. Well, that's the starting point. And now we just got to kick into gear, change the diet up and go from there. A number of years ago, I first tried a keto diet. I was 134 kilos. I got down to 94 in about 12 to 18 months. And that's what I'm sort of doing now, looking at dropping body fat, but also keeping my protein high so that I can put on muscle. I am training every single day in the gym with a push-pull legs split. That is where we are at right now. So now you know all about how I'm approaching this from a diet perspective. And you also know how my resistance training is planned. But what about cardio? So Cardio isn't essential, but I like to do it. Slow down, dickhead. Yeah, yeah, no. So I like to do it. Speed up, dickhead. Yeah, it's hard to keep an eye on that. <laughs> You've got to get it right. Tell me if there's a gun coming. When COVID came, I'd never really done much running. But I started to do it, and I, I found that the best way to get yourself up to a few extra kilometres and to actually build a base is to, if I'm week one, do three days where you just do one kilometer. Week two, week two, three days where you do two, so on and so forth, all the way up until the tenth week. All of a sudden, three days a week, I was doing 10Ks. Unfortunately, though, that fucked my knees up. So you got to look at other ways as well. I do a lot of cycling at home, not on the road. I'm not a dickhead. You can also do a lot of swimming. Back when I lived closer to uh, a gym I used to love going to, boxing, jiu-jitsu, kickboxing. It doesn't really matter what you do as long as you're moving. And obviously for weight loss, cardiovascular stuff helps, but it's not essential. It all comes down to your diet, your nutrition, and not being a fat fuck, not eating too much. But I thoroughly enjoy it. It's good fun, and it tests yourself. It makes you stronger. It builds your heart strength up. All of these things are important. Anyway, that's enough of me being David Goggins. I'll just focus on fucking running. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be real with you. I'm already three weeks into this and I'm down about five kilos. I'm very interested to see where we get after six weeks. You should be aiming to try and burn 400 to 500 calories in that half an hour. Maybe a little bit less if you're on a stationary bike. I know I've said a lot about cyclists in the past, but this is okay, I swear. Especially as someone who's only 30, it's good for your knees, I'll tell you that much. I think that what where people miss out on cardio is they just don't want to do it because it is quite boring. But I like to sit here, I usually have me my phone playing something on YouTube, maybe some Pokemons, because I'm a fucking hot bloke. But also, the main thing, actually when I started doing the running, I was listening to podcasts. And I thought to myself, this is the better way to do it. Because if you listen to uh, music, you will start to run faster, and then you'll puff yourself out, and you'll be fucked, and you won't be able to do your time. So you listen to podcasts, you can learn, you can do all that type of shit. But yeah, stationary bike isn't as fun, but it gets the job done. But, as we always say, these average mound bodies aren't made on the bike or on the run. They're made in the kitchen. Obviously, you need to eat protein to grow muscles. It repairs the muscles that you damage during your weightlifting or during your exercise, or whatever it may be. Now, here's a couple of tips. Try and eat, what, 1.8 grams per kilo that you have on your rig. And that is uh, not so much your entire body weight, but your lean body weight. So for me, let's look at about, I don't know, uh, let's just call it 100 kilos. So I'm trying to eat about 180 grams of protein a day. Just try and hit that mark. If you're making your protein shake, throw two scoops in. That's a hot tip. And also, put a little bit of milk at the bottom, or a bit more of milk in there, before you put your hooped spoon in there or your heaped scoop because if you don't little bits of protein will get stuck to the bottom so pre-moisten the bottom of your protein scoop hot tip from a hot average bloke before we go any further ladies and gentlemen this video is brought to you by the great people at odin ice baths they've hooked me up they're gonna hook you up with a special deal as well but this is my first time using it shall we this is horrifying all right This is going to be really tough. 
It's quite chilly. <sighs> Probably have to let something. The science says at least 11 minutes a week to get the benefits. So this is the Wim Hof method of really breathing. Flooding your body full of oxygen. I feel good. How long have I been going for? I feel really good. Minute 30, minute 40, minute 50. Not bad. Your first time, Jesus. This is good. People always thought about ice baths as the thing you did after exercise, but that actually harbors uh, or affects the way that the body uh, repairs the muscle. It stops the inflammation, right? Reduces the inflammation. That's at least how I understand it. Which is not what you want. You want to be inflamed. You want your body to repair itself. You want to be doing this before exercise or at least a couple of hours afterwards. I haven't been to the gym today yet. I'm going to go later. But this is sort of how I wanted to wake up this morning. Uh, and I think it's a good way to wake up. I think it's probably the best way to wake up. It's really fucking... I'm very awake. <laughs> What's that? That's three minutes. Let's go for four. What do we reckon? Or we go for five? Four. 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 That's <laughs> enough. <laughs> for your first time. Uh, that's some uh, water out before for next time so I can go lower. I think you're a brave, brave man. Post-pregnancy, you reckon you'll do this? I'm going to try it. Yeah. I am going to try it. I've seen all those fitness gals doing it, particularly in America, so mm. I'd like to try but even just putting my... Ooh. It's cold, isn't it? I think on a hot day, I could mentally do it. Probably not for four minutes like Isaac, though. How's your doodle? It doesn't exist. Wow. <laughs> Significant it is shrinkage. Like, it is like a ghost. You'd need a Ouija board to talk to my dick right now. <laughs> You're doing so well in it, though. I'm coming up on uh, five minutes, by the way. Odin Ice Bars, ladies and gentlemen. These are the, the cream of the crop. Go and check out their website. It's just a beautiful build. This is they absolutely gorgeous. And an awesome sponsor. All handmade. Absolute legends. I'm so cold. Oh. Feel my leg. Oh. Anyway, back to the video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I had to cut the diet short. Why? Um, well, this happened. Yeah, we had a little baby, little Atticus, and he's doing very, very well, and, and Claire's doing amazingly well, and it's just madness. It's so good. It's, it's beautiful. Haven't trained much this week. Um, we've been in hospital. Might jump on that old exercise bike behind me this afternoon and get some Ks in and... Uh, just so I'm nice and close by, if uh, if, if um, Claire's needs a little bit extra extra help, it's it's all hands on deck at the moment here with a five day old. But uh, as far as the diet goes, and this is the purpose of this video to show that this keto diet does work. So I started off, I was 110.4, and that was the weight at the DEXA scan that I had when I was 24.5% uh, body fat or whatever I was, 24%. Uh, let's say now 110.4. So. Over the course of five and a half weeks, I went from 110 to 100 and, drum roll please, 4.8. That's what I got down to. So in that time period, I wasn't counting macros. I wasn't counting calories. I wasn't, I was taking it, you know, I was being pretty safe. But uh, just that low carb, high fat diet, the keto diet, eating lots of uh, fatty cuts of meat, uh, leafy greens, that type of thing. That's where it left me. 
And I do think that this is a great uh, diet for a lot of people. I think it is very beneficial to a lot of people and I highly recommend it to a lot of people. Just from my own personal experience, I'm not a doctor, suck us off, all right? That's my, my, my uh, covering my ass there. Now, it's very easy to do, look it up. You don't need to buy any books. You don't need to do any of that type of stuff. It's all on the internet for free. But you have to commit yourself. You have to do it for a time period. This is only six weeks. And yeah, I've got a little bit of extra body fat to lose. Um, I think we all do. As you saw, Claire said, me too. Um, the, the thing is, like you saw in the video of me in that, in that um, ice bath, I carry all my body fat around my midsection with my beautiful childbearing hips. Um, that's just, it just comes down to doing it for a long period of time and those things go down. The main reason I'm doing all this and I, and I make these videos isn't because I have a dislike for people who are overweight, not even slightly. Um, what I'm trying to do is make people healthier and live longer and using the, the audience that I have, uh, that I'm very lucky to have, to help me do that. And I think by just putting the time in and the effort in, you can be wherever you want to be, whether that's super fit, super healthy, super strong, whatever it happens to be, you can do that. So take these bits of advice on board. Um, look after yourselves, get stronger, get healthier, get fitter, and uh, become an average man today. Head to averageman.com and check out the merch. It's very nice. We're also going to uh, release some uh, workout programs as well. If you don't really know what you're doing in the gym, they'll help you. Ladies and gentlemen, see you later. I'm going to go look after my child, okay, and little Dicky. She needs some tender love and care. Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> be a good motherfucker. Peace and believe me, Dicky.